Welcome to the Cambridge Creative Writing Centre series of conversations with writers. And today I am joined by Dr. Adnan Mamutovic, who is a writer and lecturer based in Stockholm. Adnan and I met six years ago now, is it six years? Um, at a conference in Vienna, and uh, we've become writing partners um, since then, working on a lot of collaborative projects. Um, Adnan is an extraordinary writer of short and long prose. Um, you don't do poetry yet though, do you? I, I feel. I don't think I've seen any poetry from you. No, I'm a closeted poet, so closeted I'm not poet. getting out yet. No. Uh, well, I'll, I'll keep working on you on, on that front. Um, and uh, you and I are currently working on a project that's going to turn you into a comic book hero. We've mm -hmm. got a, a graphic novel in the pipeline together. Yes, very much looking forward to that. That's a really exciting thing that's happening. Um, I can basically, you know, so because I will accomplish my dreams. So, um, your I, dreams? <laughs> yeah, my dream. <laughs> your dreams. Yes. <laughs> um, Adnan's also um, your associate professor at Stockholm uh, University and fiction editor for Two Thirds North, which is a fantastic journal um, for anyone who's looking to, to submit or, or read some new, new work in progress. Um, and your latest novel, At the Feet of Mothers, was just published earlier this year by Cinnamon Press. And that's what we're going to have a little chat about today, mostly. Mm -hmm. um, so the first question really has got to be, um, what is it like uh, bringing a novel into the world at a time of global pandemic? It's, uh, it feels like a sort of inevitable question that uh, we just can't really escape, but uh, how, how has it been? It's, obviously it's been tough. Uh, I mean, the, uh, we, we haven't been able to do much, um, you know, live promotion, like uh, uh, tours and things like that. I was uh, uh, slated to come down to, uh, to Falmouth and you know some other places to Cambridge as well. Uh, you you invited me, so uh, I always love you know these live meetings with people uh, and uh, uh, and you know doing this on Zoom and uh, other platforms. It's been okay, obviously, but not uh, uh, as I'm used to you know. And as a teacher, I, I you know I mainly love being in class and and spending time with people and not so much online. Uh, but we're managing, I think it's uh, it's fine. Brilliant. And the, the, one of the sad things about about that is I don't I don't have my copy yet. Mm -hmm. I don't have my copy yet to be able to sort of hold it up. So um, yeah. if you wouldn't mind showing us the cover of At the Feet of Mothers, I, f I feel pretty lucky because I've seen this in in manuscript form um yes. many times um but really i haven't seen the finished finished product which is uh frustrating mm. i can't i can't wait to actually read it um tell us a little bit about about the the, the story itself mm. so the story follows a character named joseph schneider uh, uh where basically it's a, it's a story of uh how he was uh, uh, adopted in the 80s in Palestine. His mother is American uh, named Rachel and his father is uh, called B uh, Benjamin. He is a, uh, an American Jew. So, uh, so from this uh, place uh, up on a, um, uh, on a mountain in North Carolina, this woman uh, goes to Gaza to help refugees, and then she finds this uh, this little kid, which she adopts. He grows up uh, believing he is actually um, Jewish Cherokee, uh, you know, uh, very much um, you know, uh, a boy of his woods. And, and he um, later on, uh, his mother demands that he actually goes and find his, uh, his biological mother, which he hates. Uh, he really hates being burdened by that double heritage, like suddenly, uh, you know, why are you doing this to me? Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, to honor his mother, uh, that, that, that wish, he does embark on that journey to Palestine and uh, trying to find that, uh, that woman. So uh, the story involves a lot of border crossing, um, a lot of um, uh, engagement with uh, parents, uh, children, emotions, uh, history, nationality, and all those things that are kind of um, haunting our world today. Mm. I was going to say, I mean, when we first, I mean, when I first um, read um, a manuscript version of this, it's, it, it was 
these were were big questions that were haunting us and it feels like even more so today these these questions of our sort of shifting borders and um identities that we're, we're sort of struggling to, to make sense of seem even more um intense today somehow uh did you have to do a lot of research for this because it's um it's quite different as a as a topic from from your previous fiction which had focus very much on your own heritage um, from Bosnia and um, and being a refugee and the experience of, of the war in the Balkans that's that's your, your short fiction your sad stories funny stories about sad refugees sad stories about funny refugees both yes. okay. yes. um, the uh, that that seemed to be very much the sort of the territory you're exploring and this is this is a jump in some ways but I think some of the themes stay the same so so how did you how did you how did you move into this this new space? Well, the, the result of this move, really, this came out of uh, uh, a sense of uh, uh, intimacy that we accomplished through stories, the, the ways we connect through stories. Uh, so you and I connected over stories. Uh, we found things that were so different, but uh, also the same. Uh, and we were able to write together, you know, uh, although our stars are entirely different and, uh, and uh, where we come from, our histories are different, but, but, but there were huge kind of, uh, uh, the intimacy was really quite great. And, and, uh, uh, and my first story was published in uh, North Carolina, or in, in the US, but by an editor from North Carolina, from this particular place. Uh, and uh, I was always amazed by the fact that someone, you know, on the other side of the globe could feel what I feel through my story. Um, uh, so, uh, so that made me realize that, okay, well, I, I can put the story there. Uh, I want to do this. I want to do, I want to take this risk. Uh, I want to do the research, but I know at core, it, it, uh, all that is technicalities because mm -hmm. the story you really, uh, if you have the right story, it doesn't matter where you place it. The place is going to affect it. Uh, that's something I've been, uh, talking about in my, uh, you know, in my lectures as well and in, in my other work uh, that, that for me is really essential but uh, the core story uh, the raw material the raw intimacy which I'm reaching for is really uh, that which is like in dialogue with these places mm -hmm. so it's not that I had to do a lot more research than I did for Bosnia even though I do come from that history, even though I have a lot more knowledge just by virtue of having grown up in that place. Uh, uh, but at the same time, we forget things, we need to do research, we need to check things. Uh, and so, yeah, I did, I did quite a lot of research for this book, mainly in terms of getting, getting it right uh, in terms of geography and, uh, and the language. Uh, because I have not done American uh, American language, especially this kind, uh, before. So that was one of the biggest challenges, perhaps. Uh, research. It's, it's like it's emotional truths, isn't it? I think you're right. It's. Um, I always remember being told it's something that stayed with me a long time that that all the writer has to do is tell the story of the human heart, and in the end, our hearts, wherever they're wherever they sort of um, find themselves they all want the same things we all have the same sort of yearnings and desires don't we and um yes. and yeah they that, that that sort of a, a mm. transcends a lot of those borders in in some ways yeah. um i should maybe say that at this point because you you referenced um our own connection over stories that um that the the piece of work that we wrote together the sort of mm. uh that we're that we're now turning into a graphic novel is 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 very much about that idea of preserving stories isn't it and it's uh, yeah. it was a, a story that um told adnan's um experience of hiding his comic books during the wars in the 90s um in bosnia and for me an attempt a very foolish attempt to try and um find those comics and replace them which led me into exploring my own connections with that region um my father was in the air force and he, and he was yeah. based there um, and I think that's something that we, we, we discovered together, wasn't it? That sort of that power of storytelling to, um, to, to make sense of a very complicated and um, 
otherwise nonsensical world and do you think that's even more something that as writers that we've we've got a bit of a responsibility right now we've got a world that's just in constant flux every day seems like another crazy script has just been sort of dumped on the the, the desk of whoever's orchestrating life and uh is that what we can do as writers right now do you think use stories to make sense of things well i think it's always been the case uh so it's not different now although we feel it more intensely because it's global and because we uh uh, it's, it's probably not even worse or more intense than it used to be for me in the 90s. Yeah, and no, but it's just that the, the sense uh, that uh, uh, that we are a part of a globe rather than just a small place. And uh, uh, for me, just making sense of that, that, that leap is, uh, is actually what makes uh, these kinds of stories really important to, to, uh, to understand these kinds of connections. Uh, so, for, so in this story, all, I, I guess I was feeling it from the beginning when I, when I started writing that uh, uh, this what if, you know, mm -hmm. someone who is so rooted to a very small place, just a cottage in, uh, you know, in, in a forest on the top of a mountain and he doesn't care about anything else, mm -hmm. suddenly discovers that he has a connection to the other side of the world and has to take that into account. Uh, you know, we may hate it just the way he hates it uh, and he wants to resist it, uh, but uh, it's, it's always going to be this search for a balance between where we want to be, uh, where we feel most comfortable and that world that is pulling us out uh, um, in these uh, dangerous, on these dangerous paths and, and yeah. so on. Oh. And because it's because it's being rooted to a narrative of ourselves as well as a place, isn't it? It's that yes. story we told ourselves about who we are, and mm -hmm. and then finding out that maybe that's not the case at all, and that we're somebody completely mm -hmm. different in in whatever context that might be. Mm -hmm. So maybe it'd be nice to to hear a little bit from the book if you wouldn't mind reading um, a little extract for us. Wet our appetites. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll read you a little bit from the beginning, uh, but I will uh, later on mention a couple of other things. Uh, but I'll read it j just the opening so you get a little bit of a sense of the character and, uh, and the hook. In this. Yeah. <laughs> Take it away. Yeah. Let's hope you'll get hooked. <laughs> so, uh, so the opening on At the Feet of Mothers is called Tourists Are Coming, uh, and this is from June 1997. Tourists are going to be a major theme in the book, uh, also something Joseph hates. He hates a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, he does. Remind me of anyone. <laughs> not, yes. Tourists are coming. You're a cute little Cherokee. The tourist lady said and pinched my cheek. I love the eye patch. Can I take a picture? Fucking tourists. They just had to ask you, every time. A picture of a real Indian boy. Should I say I'm a fake? Not sure they'd care. I looked like an Indian and that was plenty. She was fat, this one, I remember. And she'd just come out of Joy's pancake. They all come to Maggie Valley to eat pancakes. And what else? See the reservation? Watch clogging? Take the kids to ghost town in the sky. Take deep breaths in our woods. Now, this one was here for the golden pancakes and silver dollar and pecan and chocolate chip and sweet potato. And she must have had strawberry roll up. Or maybe not. Maybe they didn't exist back when I was 12. I should have listened to my mother and not come down to Maggie during the tourist season. I really should have stayed in the woods and survived the flood like Noah and his kin by staying on the top. It was always too damn hot in the valley anyway. But I was there and one thing was true. We mountain people were not rude. And we smiled at tourists even when we imagined coons nagging at their bone. At least my family did. The rest of the valley were just genuine, Tourist loving bastards, I suppose. Yeah, they damn well were. So I smiled. Yes, I used to do that back then, a lot. And I said to her, 
where do you want me to stand? I think that's a, <laughs> enough of a sample. That's, that's a strong opening. I mean, that's, that's sort of, that's changed a lot actually also as an opening from, from yeah. the, um, from the version that I read years ago. Um, yes. Tell me something about that process of, of turning an idea into an actual fully fledged novel that's going to, you know, be released out there into the world. How does it, how, how does it go through those, those phases? How do you know when it's done? Um, it's very hard to know when it's done, uh, actually, because there's always more, more to do. There's always more digging uh, and uh, it is a little bit like uh, just releasing a kid into the world. You know, you have to say uh, at some time, I, you know, uh, I'm no longer just a parent and you know, I, I, I need to be something else. Uh, so we developed this kind of uh, relationship with our stories like they were our kids. Uh, and we need to release them at some point uh, and uh, let them um, be what they are. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I mainly you know, struggled a lot uh, to, um, to get it in, in, in shape in terms of, um, uh, in terms of the plot, because uh, I don't usually work with the plot. So, uh, so that was one of the things that, uh, that took me um, a while uh, to, to get right. Uh, and to get a good balance, good flow to this journey. Uh, and so, uh, it took me quite a few years uh, because I was not always working on it. Uh, and, um, uh, and even if I did, uh, I don't think I would have finished it sooner because that's, uh, you, you have to have a couple of years to just process things and to mature and you know, to, uh, to get smarter, to get wiser. Uh, so you, you, you always um, grow quite a lot. Uh, and in a strange uh, way, it's, it's almost like now is a really, um, yeah. somehow sort of a, just the right moment for it because I think some of those questions, have, they've just bubbled right up to the surface. Just hearing you reading there with the sort of the idea of the, the divide between tourists sort of flocking into our towns and the sort of the safety and, and um, security yes. of, of the mountain retreats. Um, yes. I think that those are things that we're, we're so painfully aware of now, aren't they? That we don't want people, um, you know, we, we now we can maybe fly around the world again a little bit or travel. There's a sort of a, a nervousness about, about letting people back into our communities because of, of the, 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 the pandemic that we're in. So although are, it's sort of, <laughs> it's, it's set you apart in terms of your, your ability yeah. to, to go out there with the, with the book and take it on tour, but it's also an oddly pertinent time for it to be there as well. It is because there's, there's two things. One, one thing that's happened is uh, obviously that we want the tourists to come back. Yes. Uh, uh, there's, there's this paradox uh, in us that uh, just as in this small place, they, they don't have a lot to live off, you know, so, so they need these tourists, uh, but they also hate them. And I think that's something we all do. We hate the idea of, of the tourists, but we also want the tourists mm. to, uh, to come to us. And we want to be a tourist. Uh, we, want, you know, we want to be tourists. So, uh, and in fact, Joseph becomes a sort of a tourist. Mm. Uh, and uh, as I said, this love and hate relationship to ourselves. Yeah. Uh, we want to be authentic. We want to be genuine. Uh, and we feel that being a tourist is really inauthentic. It's really faking it. Uh, uh, and, yes, and being the object of tourism, like you want to be exciting uh, as a writer as well. A story wants to be exciting and you, you, you want to be attractive to people. But at the same time, you don't want to be exoticized. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so, so these, these are the kind of paradoxes of what we want to be and who we are. Uh, yeah. And it's, and it's a question I think that's coming up again and again for writers about the stories that we can tell and the way that we tell these stories and that question of, of um, exoticizing or, or sort of othering um, stories, which, um, yeah, it, it's a sort of, uh, it, it, it feels like we're very aware of it, I think, as writers. Where, where do you feel um, you stand on that? at the moment? Um, well, I think uh, uh, we need to always go back to the, to the basics. Uh, 
uh, where, where does writing come from? Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, at every point in our writing or at, at some point in, in our writing, when we reach, we, we do a lot of research, we'll do this and that, we write, uh, and I think it's, it's necessary, uh, uh, important for ourselves to ask, where does this come from originally? It was the same for me when I finished my PhD, you know, after, you know, for what, four years of work, uh, I had to ask myself, well, why did I start this in the first place? <laughs> you know, <laughs> this weird thing, you know, how did it come about? Where did it come from? Why is this still important to me? Yeah. And, yeah. and to answer that question in that final draft before you, I, I guess that's a way of telling, uh, you know, when it's done, when you can actually read your own work and say, okay, now I'm actually answering that. Yeah. So what? <laughs> or myself. Yeah. And um, maybe it's a spoiler to ask, but um, does Joseph come to answer that? So what that what if question that that he spends much of the novel trying to reconcile? Is that uh, mm -hmm. is that is it is it about reconciling or is it about having to in the end live with things that don't necessarily sit together comfortably, but but we have to sort of make the best of it? I think it's the second uh, because uh, it it wouldn't be uh, uh, a good piece of writing if it really wanted to answer the questions explicitly mm. uh, without leaving uh, many of them open to, uh, to, to the readers and to yourself as well. Because the moment you answer all the questions and say, uh, this is the answer, uh, you may just as well die. You know? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, nothing left to live for if we want to live. Live. So, yeah the, because yeah. that's that, that's the whole point and no the, um, so he he does answer some questions uh, in in ways that they open new venues new mm -hmm. paths you know lead them to, to to different things you know new, new kinds of uh, understanding of his relationship for instance with his mothers with his family with mm -hmm. other people uh, you know who they are and and and, and so on uh, j just to give an example, you know, for uh, this book could have been, um, I guess maybe it is political, uh, but uh, you know, it deals with uh, America, it deals with Palestine, Israel, you know, all those things. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, it's not, it's, it's, it's not responsible for giving solutions and uh, and answering those questions which we face in uh, in contemporary politics and, and, and history but seeing what broods uh, brews underneath you know, uh, and yeah. uh, what uh, how do we actually move through this uh, through this world um, yeah so uh, so I, what you what you asked me earlier well, about responsibility I think uh, there is a responsibility to uh, to tackle things, to uh, to approach questions and answers, to to deal with them, I think a novel is a response and responsibility. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but not to give you know one fixed answer in the end, you know, a, a political stance. Do you think that your um, experience writing short stories is is informed that in any way? Because the short story is very much a form that doesn't. Um, give up its answers easily in fact it sort of tends to withhold them quite tightly um, and I know because your, your first your um, your novel was the first long form thing that you published wasn't yeah. it rather than the short stories but so so you're one of these enviable people who can just move in between forms which um, I'm very jealous of that um, but but do you think there's something about um, that sort of familiarity with the short form that that sort of helps when it comes to these questions that we can't quite offer a, a firm response to? Uh, I think you're quite right. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, I was trying to look at every chapter as a short story. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, not, not, not entirely because that would, um, that would kill the flow, really. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and there are novels which are kind of series of short stories. But uh, I, I wanted to strike some kind of balance between looking at each chapter as a, as a standalone and uh, 
and a part of a bigger picture of a flow. Uh, so, uh, so I don't know how, my, how uh, successful I was in doing that, but that was at least something I was thinking of. And, uh, uh, and what you described is pretty much, uh, the, you know, describes it, yeah. yeah. So do you have any advice for, for people, you know, wouldn't know who they would be, who, who struggle to move from short to long? Is there, is there a sort of a technique? Is there something that we could take away that, that you might be able to, to guide us in, um, in that? Um, I think I'm, I'm more drawn to shorter mm -hmm. scope of stories. I think we all have some kind of a, um, a clock or some kind of a uh, instinct, you know, uh, where the story ends, I know how how big it is in scope. And and to uh, to give you an example, I, I with, my, with my first novel, I wanted to write a huge novel. I wanted to to write um, you know the Bosnian Midnight Children, you know, <laughs> six hundred, you know, a thousand pages, you know, encompassing it all. And, and I ended up with a novella. Uh, <laughs> You know, because because you know it, it just didn't seem right uh, it, to to write uh, you know a thousand page uh, novel. Uh, it didn't click with the history. It didn't fit me as as a character. Uh, uh, and uh, and if you, it a novel is not a blown up s s short story. It's not just it's like yeah. okay, this is a story. Let let me just put Keep more writing. of everything. <laughs> Yeah, it's not the yeah. more it is the merrier, you know. Some some people have a better sense of uh, you know writing really really long uh, pieces, uh, but um, uh, I really don't have a good <laughs> piece of advice for, for how how to do it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm reassured or or worried. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess it's just. Keep I think writing. also, uh, let's see, you'll be. I was also affected in the mean while I was writing it by all the essays that I was doing and mm -hmm. that we were doing as well. I think uh, uh, ju just uh, uh, writing these personal uh, essays, the, these uh, na um, like creative nonfiction, uh, yeah. that that also affected the the style and the um, uh, the form. So perhaps it's a case of not having just the one project on the go when you're working long form and it, it is consuming, isn't it? Um, yes. Maybe having these sort of side projects or other things that other forms that that start to sort of make you think differently or, or write differently, having having them on the go helps. Yes, absolutely. It yeah. does. Mm. Should we hear just a tiny bit more of the of the book and uh, and then uh, I could talk to you for hours about this, but um, I'm not sure Zoom will let me, but uh, let's just hear a little bit more from, from the book. A little bit more. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I think uh, it will be, uh, do you want to hear from the ending? I mean, you, you, you talked about the spoilers. Yeah, it's all uh, something that doesn't give everything away. Something that doesn't give everything away. Um, um, I will, uh, okay, um, this is what I'm going to read. Uh, this is uh, a chapter called Just Add Words. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's sort of kind of in the middle of the book uh, mm -hmm. where uh, uh, this is in interesting in terms of you know, storytelling, uh, and here is a scene where Joseph gets the letters that his biological mother used to send to, to Rachel, his, uh, his American mother. Mm -hmm. uh, so he discovers that they have had a correspondence uh, of sorts. Uh, so this is just after he's found out he's uh, he's uh, he's got this uh, these letters so he's going through them and so on so just add words this is what i thought of my two mothers when i sat on the floor of my father's workshop while mom pulled a pack of letters from behind some books it gave them to me nothing my thoughts left me like a bunch of cowards and my body wobbled in the draft i turned to mom I don't get it. Do you have a stash of these, these kinds of things you'll dole out on all my future birthdays? No. 
The lettuce smelled of some perfume that must have been strong once. Mom sat next to me and dad watched us from the door until I opened the first letter. Then he left. I went through each of the 16 letters, sometimes twice. I made three different piles, then looked at them and then pulled two letters from one of the heaps and stacked them with another bunch. There was no method in that woman's madness, that Aliyah, the Palestinian. There was only one letter that was not a bunch of fragments. Beautiful handwriting. I put that letter at the bottom, like the rock on which I could put the rest of mad notes, obviously written at different times with different pens and pencils, some with old and random stains that didn't smell of anything. Some had words in Arabic, like she'd put them there as placeholders until she could find the American word. And in some places, she did cross the Arabic and put something that only remotely made sense in that sentence. I kept changing my mind about the arrangement of the letters until there were only three letters in one separate pile. And then I said to mom, there are missing words in there. Yes, all verbs are gone. Or well, just add them yourself. But how will I know which are the right ones? You want. So he found a letter uh, where his biological mother, obviously, so for some reason, removed all the verbs, all the actions, all that, just left the, the rest. And he needs to. Uh, so what he does later on is he, he, he makes all these different drafts, trying to fill in the missing words, trying to recreate the meaning. And a number of verbs could fit also not fit in many different combinations. So, so it becomes like a, a small project uh, of, of trying to find out uh, what the story is in that, that mysterious letter. Which in a way is, is a really beautiful metaphor for, for what we do as writers. We're, mm. we're always trying to find out what the story is and what the right words are. And we don't know if they're the right ones until- We don't. Even yeah. when they're down there on the paper, well, we don't know. Like you said before, it's we let the we yeah. let the thing go. It goes out into the world. It's not ours anymore. And um, mm. I think that's a really yeah. that's a really lovely way to to think of this this strange alchemy that that, that is this thing we do when we write. Um, it's beautiful. Well, um, are there going to be any more um, readings or events that we can connect into um, to do with with at the feet of mothers? Is there sort of any more online touring going on um so uh, so i don't know if there will be any live readings uh, uh, organized just yet uh, probably something in the autumn uh, mm -hmm. at some point uh, i mean now it's the the summer and the covid has also uh, made, made a mess of everything so uh, so we'll see what we'll plan mm -hmm. uh, i will have some kind of a blog tour uh, i think uh, 10 bloggers are going to release something once a week uh, Sometime, uh, starting sometime in September. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll see what, what happens there. Uh, but if you, um, I have also done some uh, recordings, some, some readings. So if you uh, go to my official Facebook page, uh, uh, there I have uh, tried to record the uh, readings of some of the passages and talk a little bit about the book uh, and, uh, and so on. So and then there's also some old work uh, that, that we have done and uh, some more reading. So if you're interested in that, if you're interested in finding out more about this book and hear me read, if you think, you know, I'm an awful reader, especially yeah. I cannot do the American accent, you know, I, can, I want to try, but you know, th this accent I, ca I cannot do. Uh, and then, yeah. I, I, I might have to do just to go and have a look just to see the attempt. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, um, uh, but, but I think, uh, uh, you, you'll be able to understand what I say. <laughs> so that's Adnan Mamutovic, official author, Facebook. Yes. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and just one last question, really. Um, I, I guess, you know, how, how is your writing in, in, in the time of Corona? Are, are you writing something new now? Is there mm -hmm. words still flowing? They are actually quite uh, quite a bit. Um, obviously, there's always the academic work, which, which we have to do. Uh, but I have... Uh, uh, I've been mainly working on these, um, this new thing, which I have uh, not done before, not, not that much. Uh, these kinds of uh, 
articles which I sent, which are semi academic, semi personal, semi everything. And mm -hmm. uh, it started with uh, you know my uh, piece on Peter Handke in the autumn, but now I've uh, I've written actually one uh, uh, on COVID nineteen and jokes. Yes, that's, so, that's so, fantastic. Yeah, so so yeah. that, um, uh, I'm uh, I'm I've just written one on. Um, on racism, uh, which should come out soon, called Black Moses Matters. Uh, and, uh, and there's another piece again, uh, uh, um, which I've uh, co-written on, um, on language and history and so on, but more kind of personal stuff, uh, lighter with some, uh, with some research. Yeah, no, so something to bridge these gaps between mm -hmm. the academia and, uh, and people who just love to read. Uh, Excellent. Well, um, we will put links to all of the um, all all of the sort of um, those things that you've mentioned, and um, you have a, a habit of of choosing titles for your for your text that are almost impossible to remember. So we have um, <laughs> we have thinner than a hair um, the novel. We have how to farewell and say fair. Yes. yes. Um, short story collection we have at the feet of mothers. Um, maybe a really short title next time for, for those of us with aging memories. Um, well, and all the of the other articles. The comics piece was how to save comics in times of war. Yes. Yeah, yes. so quite long, yeah. Quite long and um, I can remember that one then. Um, <laughs> um, so we'll put links to all of those things for anyone who wants to, to, to follow those up and to, to buy the book and to, to follow the progress. Um, and just thank you ever so much for coming to talk to us. And um, every, yeah, everything we've mentioned will be, be in a link um, below the video. So um, hopefully we'll uh, be able to have you back to Cambridge when, when such times allow and um, we can um, hear more from the book and see how it's getting on and hear more from these, these other um, articles. I think, I, I feel like in a way that's, um, it's like that's where, uh, our, our writing brains can move isn't it into these sort of colliding places where there's something of ourselves these personal essays and something of having to to really look at the the, the challenges of the world right now so mm -hmm. it's um it's it's tough work but needs to be done doesn't it so thank anyway, you so much lovely. for hosting me it was really a great pleasure lovely to talk to you um lovely. and i hope it's in person next time so take care okay. take care and uh we will speak again soon